In this video, we're going to talk about translations. Now, what in the world is a translation? It is a type of transformation. And we talk about transformations. We're talking about moving figures inside the coordinate axis. You know that X, Y thing with all the lines and such? That's your coordinate plane. So we're going to move figures around things more than one dot, generally speaking. Occasionally, it's just a point, but most of the time, it's a little bit more advanced than that. The thing about a translation is it's the most basic type. It's just sliding it around. Imagine this is on like a board game board and this piece has like a little felt on the bottom and you can just slide it around based on where you want it to move. So what it's not is it does not change size. So this is not going to get any bigger or smaller in a translation. And it doesn't change orientation, which means the way it's organized in space. See how the D down here is at the bottom. Well, it's not going to, you know, rotate up here, or change and be on top or anything else. It's going to stay kind of relative to each other. It's going to look the same. So it's going to look the same. It's just going to be moved. That's the thing. Now, before we get to anything else, we need to talk a little bit about the idea of notation. We have what's called an image, which is our final product, which we haven't made yet. And before that, you know, math people are very pragmatic. They have what's called the pre-image. At this point in time, we haven't done anything. So quadrilateral A, B, C, D is just a pre-image. It's before we've even done anything. Now, we, you'll notice that the letters here don't have any markings on them. Um, so it's just A, B, C. When we move it, we finally do something and the magic happens or whatever. Um, we're going to rename the points so they look a little different. We don't want to change letters because if there's multiple figures on the page, that's a problem. So instead, math people just say, well, the prime objective is to make an image. So we're going to call this A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime. So that's the basics of the types of vocabulary notation that you need. From here, the notation continues by how they tell you to move or how they show you they're going to move. This is what you might call the language or English version where they just tell you. Start with a single point and then move it. So I am currently uh, B is at point one, negative one. So if I go three units left, I'm going to go one, two, three, and then two units up, one, two, right here is where B prime is going to be located. And you can see it's at negative two plus one. Let's see if that tracks with what we have. Um, so if I do one and going to the left means Subtraction, right? Well, 1 minus 3 is equal to negative 2. That checks out there. Perfect. And then going up is adding. So negative 1 plus 2 is equal to positive 1. And looky here. So we know we've done that one correctly. So we just do the rest. And if you have the physical graph or the physical coordinate axis, you can just kind of move it by hand. So three units left, one, two, three, up to one, two. I'm going to name this C prime. And then A is going to go one, two, three, and then up to one, two. A prime. And then D is going to go left, one, two, three, and up to one, two. And I have D prime. Now here's the problem. I am possibly the worst straight line drawer in history with this tablet that I'm using. So lie to yourself and pretend that I can draw straight lines. I know this is sort of like watching the Polar Express. It's so bad, but just pretend there's straight lines. Okay. Anyway, so that is our final answer and I'm going to check it just to make sure that I'm correct. Yep. Right where I want it to be. So A prime B prime C prime D prime did translate that way. Let's do one more of that style and then we'll um, look at the next thing. So here's another one in that style, five units to the right. 
two units up. So we'll start at D, that's our pre-image point. We'll go five to the right, one, two, three, four, five, and then we'll go up two, one, two. So this is where D prime is located. C, one, two, three, four, five. And then up two, see I forgot a part. Which is really easy to do, so make sure you're doing the right things. Also, I realize this is the worst D prime ever. D prime, better. Um, and now for E, we're just going to do the exact same thing we just did, and then we're connect them all together. So E goes one, two, three, four, five, up two, one, two, three, four, five, and that makes again E prime. You may notice that C prime and D are the same value. That happens a lot, more than you would expect. And again, you're going to lie to yourself and pretend like I can draw straight lines. I know that I can't. You don't have to bring it up. So there is my final answer. And let's just look to see if the um, reveal will bring that truth to be there. There it is. All right. So the next type that you might have is a little bit less based off of knowing a specific language or writing in that language. And we're just going to do translations that have this format. So it's telling me to go from X to x minus 1. So I might even write over here so for x, I'm going to say since it's minus 1, I'm going to say left 1. If it was x plus 1, I would say right here. But it's not. So just be aware. So x left 1. Y. See how it says y here and y here? That means stay the same. So for my x values, I'm just going to go left one. So this goes here, and the y stays the same. So this would be g prime, d prime, e prime, and f prime. There you go. Let's check to see if it's correct. Yep. I mean, other than I can't draw a straight line anymore. Uh, but that's it. Another of the same type. X plus 1, that matters. Y plus 3. So remember, the first one is either going to be left or right. And since it's plus, it's right, since it's addition. So I'm going to say X right 1. Would I write all this down? Somebody like me, yes, I would. And then this one's going to be up or down. And since it's positive, it's up. The reason I say people like me is I have like attention issues. So it helps if I write this down because when I zone out or see squirrels or something, it helps me come back. So I'm going to go to the right one here and I'm going to go up three, one, two, three. And if you need to get a really light pen and just do that, it's fine. Nobody's judging you. Don't judge your final answer. Right one, one, two, three. Right, one, one, two, three. There's another situation where the prime value would match one of the other ones, one of the originals. Right, one, one, two, no, one, two, three. See? Easy. And does it match? Yep. Okay. The last type is where they just give you a translation value. This is pretty rare um, that you have them that look like this when you get to statewide tests and things. But essentially, all you're going to do is just follow uh, at five and one, it's uh, plus five, plus one. So again, you're gonna be right five, up one. Let's just do a single point here. We'll just do you, not you as a person, the letter. Um, one, two, three, four, five, up one, right there. So U prime should be there. We'll check. Hey, hey. Now the last type that you might see is where you don't even have any images and you're just given the values and then you're going to have to do a little bit of work to make that happen. So let's look at one of those. So this is what you might also see. It's telling you that your translation is plus three. So again, because this is X, it's going to be a left or right thing. 
So uh, that means it's plus three to the right. So I'm going to write, make an R there and put three. And you can even, you can write, write, whatever you want. Seems a little hard to say. Um, and then for the Y value, it's just going to stay the same. So same down here. Now they give you some values, so you need to find these. Negative 3 and 0 is here, so that's where i is located. Again, this is just making the pre-image. Negative 3 and plus 2 right there. That's your h value. And 1 and 3, so 1, 1, 2, 3. That's your g. The good news is when I draw both of them, they both look equally bad. Maybe. We'll see. So I'm going to go right three with each one and stay the same. So one, two, three, and that becomes G prime. It actually looks like a G instead of a six, like this one does. Right three, one, two, three, that would be H prime. And then I, one, two, three, I prime. And then I'll just test. And that's it. So that's translations. Just make sure that it doesn't rotate. It doesn't move around and get bigger or smaller. All you're doing is sliding that piece around based on the instructions that you've been given.